Most of us are familiar with the major science fiction films, the popular ones like Blade Runner, Alien, and The Matrix. And I'm not even going to get into the uh, classic science fiction films of the 50s and early 60s. But there are some really good science fiction films that had a lower profile that maybe slipped through the cracks because of they were a smaller budget. And that's what I want to focus on today. This is the Kazdoy Closet. I'm Kazdoy. That's my closet full of all the stuff that I love. And today I want to talk about three solid science fiction films that you may have missed. The first one I want to talk about is uh, one that's very near and dear to my heart. It's uh, Fahrenheit 451 from 1966. On IMDb, it got a rating of 7.2, so that's pretty good. Um, in case you don't know the plot of Fahrenheit 451, it's uh, based on a Ray Bradbury novel. It's about a future dystopian society in which books are illegal and the firemen are in charge of finding the books in people's homes and burning them. Um, this is a very interesting film because, uh, first of all, it's an allegory on censorship, freedom of thought, free expression, and uh, it has a interesting uh, international uh, credits to it. It was directed by a Frenchman, Francois Truffaut, who of course went on to make great films like The 400 Blows and Day for Night and Jules and Jim. It was written by an American, Ray Bradbury, not the screenplay, but the novel. It stars a German, Oscar Werner. His co-star is from England, uh, Julie Christie. She plays a double role. And it's a weird mix of different uh, personalities and nationalities coming together, but I think it works really well. It's a very uh, cold, uh, chilly kind of film. Some of the special effects are a little bit hokey by today's standards, but that's okay. The music is great. It's by the great Bernard Herrmann, who is probably most famous for the Psycho score. And the director of photography, Nicholas Rogue, of course, went on to uh, his own uh, fame as a film director. And my own personal history with Fahrenheit 451 is I think the novel was probably the first serious novel I ever read back when I was in elementary school. I'm not sure how I came across it, but uh, that was it. And then I taught science fiction in um, high school for many years, and I usually used Fahrenheit 451 as one of our novels. It didn't always work that well. I would explain to the kids that this is a a book about a society that burns books and books are illegal and a lot of kids weren't that into reading believe it or not and they thought cool they burn books good because i hate books so then i had to explain that well, okay well, let maybe uh, the you know, all the music you listen to that would not be around either all the websites you like same thing so don't think of it just as books think of it as the free press or free expression um, there were talks of remaking this for many years. Mel Gibson was interested in it for a while and he was going to play the main character, the fireman Montag. Um, that never happened. Uh, HBO did do a remake in 2018. Uh, it was not very good. I don't think I made it through the whole thing. Uh, it got a 4.9 on IMDb, so that tells you something. Now, if you're a Ray Bradbury fan, another honorable mention I want to get in there, though it's not nearly as good as Fahrenheit 451, is the film The Illustrated Man, based on another Ray Bradbury novel. This is from 1969, and uh, got a 6.0 IMDb, which is pretty average. And this is about a, an illustrated man. Uh, Rod Steiger plays this uh, hobo who has is covered with tattoos, and he's a uh, looking for the woman who apparently did this to him. I don't know how he didn't know that she did it, but somehow she did this to him. And he's trying to get revenge. And that's kind of the framing device. And then he meets somebody else and this other person looks at a certain tattoos and these stories come to life. So it's like an anthology film where uh, each uh, three different tattoos 
uh, become a story, a short story by Ray Bradbury, and it goes into the story. Then it comes back to the main framing device with Rod Steiger as the illustrated man. So if you're a Ray Bradbury fan, you might find this interesting. The next film that uh, is a really good science fiction film that slipped under the radar for a lot of people is called Moon. And this is from uh, 2009. It's got a 7.9 on the IMDb scale. Now Moon is about an astronaut and he is, uh, he is hired by a company called Lunar Industries and he has a three year job uh, on a moon base and he's by himself and he's there to harvest a certain material energy source that they found on the moon, a clean, safe energy source. And then he harvests it with machinery and he sends it back by rocket to Earth. And this is his only company on the, um, on the moon base is Gurdy. That's a, a computer which kind of moves around and hangs from the ceiling and the voice of the computer is by Kevin Spacey, but it's not as creepy as you might imagine. It works well. And so this main character, uh, the astronaut, he is coming up on the end of his three year gig and then he makes a very interesting discovery. And I'm not gonna say what that is because that would ruin everything, but I think you'll like it. Sam Rockwell stars in this and it's basically a one man show. He's great. He went on to uh, do a really great performance in Jojo Rabbit and the Three Billboards film. And the director is Duncan Jones, who uh, you may know his father better. His father is David Jones, not of the monkeys. David Jones, known better as David Bowie. And Duncan Jones also went on to make another very good science fiction film called Source Code. And there's also a book about the making of Moon called Making Moon. And they refer to this as a cult classic in that book. So Moon, very good, solid science fiction film. Now the third one I wanna focus on that may have slipped through the cracks is from 1997 and it's called Cube. And this got a 7.2 on the IMDb scale. Cube is about um, six different people and they wake up in this strange uh, cube room, cube structured room, and they don't know how they got there. And each room has a different uh, sort of deadly trap, like a booby trap hooked into it. And they have to learn how to navigate through each room. Now finally, or rather eventually, they, uh, these six people find each other by going from room to room. And they learn uh, together how to navigate each room. It also turns out that each one has a particular talent. For example, one guy is a cop, one guy is a doctor, one guy is a math genius. And this is just all about them trying to figure out how they get there, what's the meaning behind all of this. It's sort of like an extended Twilight Zone episode, but it's very original, very cool looking, and very different. Um, there were two sequels. I don't think either one has held in very high regard. The director, Vincenzo Natale, he went on to uh, do a lot of epi TV episodes of The Strain, Westworld, um, Orphan Black, Luke Cage. And he also made another very good science fiction film called Splice. And Splice is from 2009. And it's about two scientists who are using human DNA and experimenting with uh, combining it with other species including alien species to see what they can create. And so Splice is also a very interesting film. Um, you know, this is the only film of the ones I've mentioned that has some sort of creature in it. The other three are, the three main ones I mentioned are really purely, more purely science fiction films. So uh, those are the three science fiction films that I think are really good that uh, may have slipped through the cracks and you might want to check out. So we're talking about Fahrenheit 451, which has been around for a while, Moon, and Cube. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, feel free to leave a comment, something, uh, maybe a science fiction film that you want to bring my attention to that is a little obscure. 
and uh, leave a thumbs up if you like to. Don't leave a thumbs down. Subscribe would be great. Otherwise, uh, I want to thank you for watching this video and I will see you next time.